All right, I unmuted everybody in case you want to have a resounding round of applause for Brad Dunnick. Hey! Oh, hey. Go, Brad. Did you mute it? I don't Brad, know. Brad. It's, Brad. it's really hard to tell a story when you're getting no feedback. Thank you. Oh, no, it's same. I think it's, I think it happened. What's that, Wayne? Tim Cook. All right, I muted you all again. <laughs> there was some sort of. Unmute yourself, Margo. Oh. <laughs> We're going to move into the Q&A portion of this. Uh, Brad, thank you so much. Um, you look like you're unmuted. Um, and I think the easiest way to do this would be just to unmute yourself or to throw questions into the chat bar. Brad, are you there? Can we hear you? I am here. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hello, hello. Here is the uh, bottle of Burt Loper's whiskey. And if anybody would care to have a drink with me, here's to Burt Loper. The Burt. <laughs> Cheers. Any questions? Comment? Criticism? They can chat if they want. How many boats did Bert make? Uh, let's see. Uh, he built oh, wait. Right Would it be OK if we identify ourselves in the three pages of people when you ask a question, just so that we can uh, welcome you to the space yeah that oh, was and a, and a disclosure that the q a section will be recorded um so okay. if you don't want your face in this section to go ahead and turn your um change your video settings uh, off of your face to your name or something else but go ahead please ask the question again and identify yourself this is Joe Nelson. How many boats did Bert make? Um, yeah, I, I'll just kind of go through it in my mind. He built the uh, Ross Wheeler. He built Old Betsy. He built the 1939 boat, and he built this one, the Grand Canyon. That's four I can think of. Um, the other boats had been built by other people. He also said that he liked living a life where he could walk up to a pile of driftwood with a crowbar and a hammer and build a boat. So he built various floating devices in Glen King probably over his years. But only about four that I can think of, this being the, the final one. Another toast for <laughs> Hi, Brad. It's Lynn. Hi, Lynn. Hey. <laughs> nice to see you in cyberspace. <laughs> um, where did you get some of that old um, footage uh, of him actually like running rapids and stuff? I mean, who, who took that way back when? Well, they had a uh, cameraman with them on the 1939 trip. There was Don Harris and Bert Loper and then uh, Chet Clevin and Bill Gibson. Bill had been on the uh, 1938 Neville strip, and he was in, in like film school or something in San Francisco. And so they made that footage. But uh, <laughs> where it's gone for the phone breaks, awful lot of the footage we got, like that Ross Wheeler stuff, would never have been tracked down and put in one place. So thanks to uh, Don Briggs. Here's to Don Briggs. We're going to Don now. Right. <laughs> Thank you. Anybody else? Tim, did you have a question? Who me? Oh. No, Tim Cooper. Looks like he's trying to talk. So let me see if I can unmute you. You're way at the end. There you are. Where she is. That is not her age. Tim, can you hear? Yeah, us? I can hear you. Do you have a question? Is that the I, River Guides office? Hey, Brad. That's where Lynn is. 
Not to yell, just talk. <laughs> Laura, two I have done a couple calls with Laura. She's not, she must not be in her engine. She might be back. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm recording. We are recording. Yeah. Well, I'm going to say this out loud. I don't know if anyone can hear me, but Brad, it sounds like you have pretty concrete plans to take the boat out next year. And w would that be on a commercial trip or how are you going to go about getting that boat down the river? Hi, co pilot. Um, <laughs> Hi, Brad. Uh, it, it, it is in the. Uh, in uh, suspended animation right now. We were gonna take it on the guide training trip this year. And uh, well, you all know what happened. Mm. <laughs> so, uh, COVID willing, hopefully there will be a guide training trip next year. And I'm gonna try to wave my get out of jail free card around and say, can we take it next year? Because it's really not a great commercial boat, I don't think. But I think it's going to be an adventure. And compared to a sweep scow or a Powell boat, I think it'll be a cinch. <laughs> but we know not. Keep your yeah. eyes posted at 24 and a half pounds. Right, right. <clears throat> Lynn, can we take it? <laughs> Why not? We were going to do it this year, and I'd say that it's, you know, it would be fantastic to have you and the Bert Loper boat on the GTS river trip next year. And, and I was just really so excited to have, um, you know, that as a possibility for this last, you know, <laughs> for what was supposed to happen last month. And, you know, it only took a world pandemic to keep it from happening. So, you know, barring that, I'd say, yeah. Awesome. We got a uh, 10 horse under the hood too. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Anybody? Is, if I could just follow up on a question that Lynn asked, and I think uh, Andy or someone asked it in the chat too. Are those videos that you showed are they available on YouTube or are they publicly available or where, where could we see those a little bit better than what we saw on our screens? Um, that's a tough question. Where can we see them? Uh, my advice would be to get hold of the Don Briggs video, uh, River Runners of Grand Canyon. Uh, these are clips I pulled off of that. Uh, I think that the Ross Wheeler footage is at University of Utah. I uh, have to check with, with somebody up there. Roy Webb used to know where all that stuff was, but he retired. And then the uh, 1939 one, I know they've got it at the Huntington, but uh, I'm not sure where else that footage might be. Possibly NAU, possibly uh, U of U. But it's, uh, it's, it's always fun to, to look at that footage, especially once you build the boat and get your ass kicked in it then go back and see how they handled it. And it, it's usually pretty informative. Wow, look at all these people staring at their videos. Oh, I think I just got a question in the chat bar here from Joe Nielsen, Brad. Um, were, boats, uh, were Bert's boats design progression increases in rocket? And if so, how much? Um, Bert wasn't a big fan of a uh, big rocker like Neville's was, but yeah, there's definitely more rocker, which is the bottom curve end to end. There's more rocker in this one that I'm sitting on than there was in the uh, Ross Wheeler, which was more of a Galloway style. Uh, they all had a bit of end to end rocker though. And it's just a, a question of how much. Um, and that, that's still a, a, an adventure today in uh, drift boat design, more left straight section in the middle or whatnot. But I would say he, he put a bit more in towards his later boats than he did in the, in the Ross Wheeler. Hey, Brad, uh, this is Eli Nelson. Um, I'm wondering, uh, how does Buzz Holmstrom's boat compare to uh, um, 
uh, Loper's boats here. <laughs> That's no fair. Buzz was a genius. Um, Buzz Holmstrom's boat is fucking brilliant. Excuse me. Um, it's right over there, actually. If, if only we could walk around. But uh, we can. We can. We yeah. can. Uh, our, our camera's going to go over and take a quick look at the Julius. And um, the Julius was based on the Galloway design, uh, which is what uh, the Colt brothers were running and Galloway, of course. But he made it a bit wider, a fair amount shorter, added rocker, put side to side rocker in it, uh, made the. Here, hold this for a second. Hang on. Burp, burp. Our lovely assistant is climbing through the Hetch Hetchy to get to the Julius. Okay. Okay, here we go. Here we go. And so what he did was made a, a very compact, wide, over rocker Galloway. And that thing is a dream boat. And uh, the boat experts at the time who had seen all of these other boats, including Burke's boat, said that. Uh, the Julius F, which is that boat right there, was the greatest whitewater boat ever built. And I would have to agree in 1937, 38, 39, that was true. That's a really fun boat to row once you put banging your knuckles on the uh, <coughs> oh, Wrong way. Thanks, Brad. I appreciate that. Yeah. It's true. You guys want to look around the shop? We could take the camera up and spin it in circles. Yeah. Um, can I mention something really quick, Brad? Um, yeah. It seemed to me that um, uh, through NAU Klein Library Special Collections that they were making copies of River Runners of the Grand Canyon by John Briggs of that um, uh, DVD, I guess. And so, um, and it's fabulous, you know, if you have not seen it, any of you, it's just amazing for all of Grand Canyon history. It's so well done. And um, so anyway, I, if you are interested, you can contact me and I can put you in touch with the people that are doing the ordering for that. Cool. Yeah, for those who didn't know Don, he died uh, a few months ago, but he was uh, an incredible uh, filmmaker. Very dyslexic, could barely read, but man, could he make a good film. Yeah. Hey, Brad. Um, yeah. And just to let everybody know that we have about seven minutes left until Sam comes on. Um, but I have a question in here. Uh, I love it. Dave Kishinsky, who pulled the boat from the river in 1939? In 1939, that trip, the, the trip that, uh, well, in 1939, they rode on through. In 1949, uh, when the the Grand Canyon was uh, flipped and, and basically sunk at 24 and a half mile. It uh, wallowed ashore there above Buck Farm and the rest of the trip caught up to it. And it was Don Harris, Wayne Nickel, who was actually riding with uh, Bert when the boat went over. And uh, sidetrack here since we got seven minutes. Wayne Nickel and Don Harris were neighbors and Wayne was a skier. And Don was a boatman, and they made a deal they would teach each other their respect. And Wayne taught uh, skiing at Alta until he died at the age of about a billion. And a lot of current river runners I know, Fritz knew him and uh, Jonesy knew him. And, uh, but anyhow, Wayne was there. Wayne, when the boat flipped over, uh, Wayne was mostly deaf and his, his, his hearing aids drowned, so he was deaf for the rest of that trip. Harry Aylison was there, and a brand new book out on Harry Aylison by Rennie Russell. You should try and get hold of it. He's got a big Kickstarter program going on. Uh, Harry Aylison's mistress, uh, Lou Fetzner, was on the trip. 
there were a couple of paid clients. Howard Welty uh, was on the trip. I think Jack Brennan was on the trip. Anyhow, it was a pretty good gang of folks, and they dragged it up there. And what I was wondering, pointed uh, more at the bow, the, uh, the calligraphy on the bow is, there's some kind of fancy lettering in there. And this is a, a fairly exact copy of it. And I've always wondered who was the calligrapher that did that. And uh, I may never know. But they dragged it up there, tied it to that mesquite tree. They said that they tucked away into the bushes uh, things of birds that they didn't want people messing with. I've looked high and far and wide for Bert's typewriter. I never found it. Uh, there's the, uh, the bow placards. Uh, Vladimir Kovalik III did those for us, uh, based on the original ones that were done by a friend of Bert's before he died. But uh, yeah, that's who dragged it up there, and it's just slowly degrading. Um, I don't think that, you know, some people say, well, people have picked it to pieces. I don't think you could put a plywood box on a slope in the Grand Canyon for 75 years and have it be in much better shape. You know, no one touched it. It's, it's just doing what Bert did, becoming part of Grand Canyon. Beautiful, Brad. I got one last question here um, from Ms. Helen Rainey. What do you think should happen to the Ross Wheeler? Up to the collection or rust away? That, that is a sticky question. Uh, I mean, we've all looked at the Ross Wheeler a million times. A lot of us go up there and tell stories. It's part of the canyon. Should it be taken out and preserved? It would be an easier question, I think, if we had any chance of a boat museum, but the, uh, the powers that be at Grand Canyon need a lot of political will for that, and they've got a lot of political won't. So I don't really see a museum coming. So should it be taken into cold storage? Should we put a replica there? Should we just let it be part of the story and fade away? I'm not sure I have an opinion on it. I love that boat, it's pretty cool. I've got the plans. Andy and I and uh, uh, a couple others have, have measured that thing and, and we can replicate it. But uh, I don't know, that's a tough question, Helen. I'd hate to see it gone. Another chat. Uh, thank you so much okay we're rounding we, we're about three minutes away from our scheduled time for sam jensen to come on and we're going to allow ourselves 